How's it going guys? Welcome to Miller's Wildlife. My name is Jason Miller and this is Rhinella marina, the cane toad or marine toad. And uh, these guys live normally in Central and South America. They have a pretty broad range, but they're famous for being introduced into Australia and Hawaii. And less known, they're also becoming very, very common in Florida. And I'm not talking about the Everglades where all the other invasive things are. I'm, I'm right now in the suburbs of Southwest Florida. I'm in Naples. I'm actually in my uncle's backyard finding these everywhere. And they really thrive in more urbanized environments because there are absolutely no predators here that can really do them any damage. And any predators that do try to take a bite out of the cane toad or marine toad, they have to deal with pretty serious toxin called a bufotoxin, which they secrete from these glands behind their heads. And that's called the parotoid gland. Now, these glands secrete a toxin that isn't quite deadly to humans. It will give you serious stomach problems. It might even warrant a hospital visit. But to your pets, it can be deadly. The best way to tell if your pet has accidentally ingested cane toad poison is foaming at the mouth and redness of the gums. And that sometimes is followed by seizures and whimpering and crying and just general unpleasantness. And it can kill small dogs and cats. So the question is, how did this toad species from Central America get here to Southern Florida? And the answer is, unfortunately, same way every other invasive species gets here. Uh, they were introduced by humans. Sometimes this is accidental. Most of the time, actually, it's accidental, uh, either from stowaways on ships getting here from Cuba, or uh, sometimes they're attached to exotic plants when they're being brought over, or they're here for the pet trade and they escape or they're released. But sometimes, it's intentional, and that's the case with the cane toad. We started planting cane sugar here in Florida, uh, just like they did over in Australia and in Hawaii. And with the cane sugar came cane beetles. And cane beetles are a pest that eat the cane sugar crops. So uh, the thought is bringing the cane toads here would take care of that problem. We'd have no more cane beetles, and therefore we could grow cane sugar more, uh, more successfully. The problem was, cane toads are really good at surviving. When an animal evolves, it's evolving alongside its environment and the other animals in that environment. So when you take a foreign animal, bring it into that environment, usually it dies because the balance is upset and it ends up not being able to thrive. It's either preyed upon or can't find correct food. But sometimes, and this is where invasive species come from, they thrive in an unnatural environment because the balance tips in their favor. They have almost no natural predators here, and they eat almost everything because they're a very large species. This may look huge, but uh, he's not even full grown. Uh, some of these guys can reach over nine inches when they're full grown, but the average is closer to four to six inches. So there's a lot here that the cane toad can eat. Any kind of insect, any uh, smaller amphibians, small reptiles, lizards, snakes, smaller native toads, native frogs, even small mammals. A lot can be eaten by this guy and almost nothing can eat them. So obviously this is very bad for the Florida ecosystem. It's putting a lot of pressure on native species and upsetting the balance. And it's really a shame because the cane toad didn't ask for this. They didn't ask to be too good at surviving in this unnatural habitat. We brought them here, we released them intentionally, and uh, now we're just, we're getting the backlash from it. We're, we're, we're paying for our mistakes as humans. And cane toads are one of many, many invasive species found here in Florida, especially here in South Florida. South Florida actually has more invasive species than any other place on the planet. So the question is now, what can be done to eradicate this invasive species? And you're thinking it could be something as simple as release a disease or a bacteria into the ecosystem that targets toads. Unfortunately, that can't work because there's actually a native toad species here. It's much smaller, and it has uh, really interesting little crests right on the side here and much smaller poison glands. I'd say you can tell them apart, as the cane toads have very large poison glands, paratoid glands rather, and the uh, native toads have smaller oval-shaped ones. So if we try to release something into the ecosystem that targets toad biology, the native toads are going to suffer from that as well, and they're already being put under enough pressure from the cane toads being here. Uh, the next step is just killing them when you see them, and that's pretty much what's being done most commonly here in Florida. If you see one in your yard, kill it. You put them in the freezer for a couple hours, they die, and uh, what a lot of people do is turn them into fertilizer or compost and uh, add them to their garden. But 
it's it's a shame we shouldn't have to be killing these animals but unfortunately right now it looks like the only option available and it is a shame because not a lot of people may think so, but I think that cane toads are absolutely beautiful animals. If you look closely, their eyes are these golden little galaxies, and they're very, very pretty, uh, as strange as that sounds. And they're really remarkable animals. The fact that they're able to survive so well in so many different environments is something I actually admire a lot as a species. They're so successful. But that's also the problem, is they're too successful. And um, because it's our fault, we have to deal with it now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to share with your friends, subscribe, like, and uh, I'll see you next time.